Hey folks, we're here doing another video that will hopefully help you draw a tag this year and go hunting. Today we're going to talk about Utah, all species for Utah. And this year, the deadline, I better look this up to make sure. I've got the, the Go Hunt Insider article here. I got the regulations from Utah here. The deadline this year is March 4th, 2021. You got to get in on that deadline. If you don't, they give you, they've started a couple of years ago, giving us a little bit of leeway where you have an extra two weeks until March 18th that you can do point only purchase uh, to buy bonus or preference points. So Utah is a great state. The downside of Utah is drawing a tag is really, really difficult for non-residents. Unlike some states, and like a few other states, Utah takes 10% of their limited entry tags and they put them in a separate pool. And us non-residents are fighting over these tags. The pool of tags over there, those are all resident tags. We're not even part of our problem. If there's a downside with Utah, it's we don't know how many tags for each hunt code until after the deadline. Usually that comes out in sometime the last half of April when they're, uh, I think they call them regional advisory committees. Uh, they all meet their regional areas and then they approve or send recommendations and then they finalize the numbers. But we've already had to do our applications by then. And sometimes you'll, you'll see how this can be a complication in a state like Utah that's a hybrid system. Sometimes they lower the tag, sometimes they'll increase the tag. And that could change the results of, the, of how you would have done your strategy had you known. But is what it is. Utah requires you to buy a non-refundable, non-resident license that has went up 10% this year. It's up to $72, which is pretty reasonable compared to some of the other states. They also bumped the non-resident application fee from $10 per species to $15 per species. And the tag prices went whew, way up. I'm glad I drew bison in 2018 instead of this year because a lot of those tag fees and the limited entry hunts went up 30 to 40%. So little increase in our non-refundable license, but a big increase in the tag fees. But my personal feeling is that it's still worth those high tag fees if you're lucky enough to draw. And when I say lucky enough to draw, when you look at what the draw odds are in Utah, we're talking like really lucky. <laughs> uh, but let's go into how their system works. I said it's a hybrid system. Some people like to say, oh, Utah is a bonus point system. Well, it kind of is, but it's kind of a preference point system too. And I do this quick reminder every year. Preference points are the person with the most points gets the tag until all the tags are gone. Bonus point we get a raffle ticket for each of our bonus points and we have a chance. I mean, preference point, you might not have a chance because you're down at the bottom. Bonus point, you still have one ticket in the bucket, you might draw. So what they do in Utah is this pool of non-resident tags I was talking about is they split half of them over here into, they call it a bonus draw. In other words, they convert your bonus points to preference points and they give the tag to the highest point holder. And then the other half, all of us who don't draw in this part, we get thrown into the other half of the draw where it's a true bonus point system where, you know, the more bonus points you have, the better your chance. So some of these hunt codes only have one, two, three, four tags for non-residents. So people say, well, how do they determine which tag goes where? The first tag always goes over into the bonus point part of that draw. The second tag and the third tag go over here to the preference part of this draw. And then the fourth tag back over to the bonus point side. They call it random. It's, I wish they'd call it preference and bonus, but they don't. So, uh, And then the fifth tag goes over here to the highest point holders, the six tags to the and it, it just keeps going that way. So some units will go from having 
one tag to two tags. So if it only has one tag, it's going to be all over here in this bonus point, you know, everybody has a chance part of the draw because there's no tag awarded to the high point holder draw. Now some years they add a second tag. And if they do that, all of a sudden the high point holder gets a surprise that, wow, I'm guaranteed the tag this year. Sometimes that flips where you had two tags and someone applies over here thinking, oh man, I'm gonna draw, this is my year, I've got a ton of points. All of a sudden they get rid of the second tag and there's only one tag left and it's just based on a bonus point system and that high point holder is disappointed because they were already making plans. Boy, I'm going elk hunting or I'm going deer hunting or whatever. And too bad for them. The fact that we get to compete for a pool that represents 10% of the limited entry tags, at least we know that this is what non-residents get. Some states, like my home state of Montana, Idaho, Arizona, it's up to 10%, and you're competing against re residents for those tags. So some years, non-residents only get 2 3 5 8% instead of the 10%. At least with Utah, we know that we're getting our 10%, rounded for whatever the tag numbers are. At the end of this, I'll probably get into the general deer thing. Really weird. You would think general deer gives the connotation that, oh, it's general. You go buy the tag is over the counter. But no, it's you have to apply for it. And it's not in the bonus point system that all the other hunts are. It's on a preference point system. <laughs> well, for whatever reason, that's how they did it. Uh, you know, is what it is. What we're mostly focused on are the high demand limited entry tags that attracts all of this interest in Utah. Earlier I did a point creep video that if you go out to our channel, you'll see it. If you go and listen to the podcasts that we did, you'll see it. And if you go out to go hunt, Brady and Trail have done a big piece about point creep out on their insider service. So go to go hunt, sign up to be an insider if you do. Uh, all this information that I'm given here is high level. The insider will drill down with all the details. They'll have that point creep uh, information I'm talking about, which is really applicable to Utah. And when you go out there and sign up for the insider, if you use promo code Randy, they'll give you a $50 gift card, mad money in their gear shop. So, uh, but for the purpose of this video, we wanna give you the information, the things you just don't wanna miss and if you really want to nerd out on it like I do, uh, you got a place to go and do that. So I talked about you got the upfront cost, you got to buy the non-refundable license. And I kind of broke out how you have two portions of their draw, where half of the tags go over here, where it's based on the maximum point holders getting the tag, and the other half of the tags are over here, where we're all in this based on our bonus points. So that's why I call it a hybrid system. It's, uh, it's really not uh, a true bonus point system. But here's one of the things that's really quirky about Utah that you need to keep in mind. There's a sequence to their draw and you're only allowed one limited entry tag per year, one. The sequence of the draw goes like this. They do all limited entry buck deer, all limited entry elk, and then they go to limited entry antelope, and then they go to all of the limited entry once in a lifetime species, and they go in this order. Sheep, moose, mountain goat, last one is bison. So they're doing each of these draws. They, they conduct a different draw for every species, and they start with limited entry buck deer. Well, since you're only allowed one limited entry tag, if you draw a limited entry deer tag, which is the first draw they do, you are kicked out of every remaining draw and they just give you an extra point with the exception of general deer. Again, that general deer doesn't get affected by any of this. Let's say you don't draw deer, but you draw elk. Well, you're kicked out of antelope and you're kicked out of all the limited entry draws. Just. Forget about it. You're getting a point. So 
be thinking about that because you might apply for an easier to draw deer tag in a year when you've got a pile of elk points. Well, if you draw that easier to draw deer tag, you're out. You, you aren't gonna get a chance to capitalize on all these elk points that you have. It's, it's something to be thinking about how the sequence of the draw works. And they do all these limited entry ones I just explained. And then after that, they do general buck deer. And you can draw a limited entry deer tag or limited entry tag and still be in the running for a general buck deer tag. For those of you wondering, this number used to be age 14, now it's 12. Um, you have to have passed hunter education. If you are an old coot like me, you may or may not have to take hunter education. The cutoff is December 31st, 1965. If you were born before that, you don't need hunter ed. I was born before that by a, a, a little more than a year. Uh, but if you're born after that, you have to have a certified hunter ed class. There's some things about weapons restrictions and stuff, and the reason that becomes relevant in Utah is they have a lot of special hunts. They have a lot of uh, muzzleloader hunts. They have more archery hunts as a percentage of the tags than a lot of other states. So make sure you know what the draw weights, the broadhead cutting width, uh, the minimum caliber for muzzleloaders, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people say, well, if I draw too many tags this year, can I turn one back? And the answer is in, in Utah, yeah, you can turn a tag back. Uh, I don't think you're gonna want to. Uh, I wouldn't. Go and read the regulations in Utah, but uh, if you wanna turn a tag back in, you can do that up to 30 days uh, before season, but go read uh, how it works. A lot of people will ask, is Utah worth it? Um, it depends. What, you know, what amount of budget you have, where you wanna apply, what species is your highest priority, um, you know, if, if your highest priority is antelope, you're probably going to focus more on Wyoming and that'll be a higher priority than Utah. If your absolute dream is elk and you're willing to wait 20, 30 years to draw, well, Utah is probably pretty high up your list. Now, one of the things I would say that you do when, when you're looking at Utah Go Hunt has this information. Uh, if you're willing to sort through, I think 400 and some pages, you can find it out on the Utah DWR, Division of Wildlife Resources. But look at how many people are buying points in Utah versus applying. And the reason I say that is especially for high demand species like elk. Utah's known for big elk. Even though it's not what it was 10, 15 years ago, it's still a premium tag to have. In 2020, if you look at the reports, slightly over 16,000 non-residents actually applied for a tag. But over here on the side, you have more than that. You have more than 17,000 who just bought a point. So Utah is one of those states where you see a lot of point creep because you have many double-digit point holders way over here who don't even show up in last year's draw odds. Yeah. If less than half of the people are actually applying for a tag and more than half are actually, are, are not applying, but just buying points, you can get some surprises along the way when people in this other half start jumping in and burning their points. So pay attention to that. Last year draw odds are super, super critical. They're, they're what you start, your, your basis, you know, your, your, your kind of your foundation for your application strategy. But don't disregard this pool of point buyers over here. Now, I would say if you are looking at elk and probably mule deer in any of the ones in lifetime, Utah is a long-term plan state. All right, there's very few tags that non-residents can ap apply for and draw over in this high point, draw the first half of it. Very few hunt codes of any species can you draw over here with less than double digit points. In fact, I'd say none of them can you draw with less than double digit points. And when you get this pool of people over here just buying points with double digit, it really skews things on a year by year basis. Now when you get over here to the 
uh, you know, the bonus point part of that draw. Some call it random. It's really not random. It's truly a bonus point draw. There you have a chance. But the low point holders, the chances are really, really slim. I just look at the elk numbers and it, it's astounding how many people are in the, in the system for elk compared to how few tags they give away. I mean, it's really, really small. <laughs> but, you know, someone's going to draw. You kind of have to approach it that, okay, the odds are small, but I'm buying a raffle ticket. My $15 application fee plus my non-refundable license, that's just a, like a raffle ticket that if I went to one of the conservation groups and participated in one of their raffles, your odds are about the same, less than 1%. You know, as hunters, we're all kind of suckers for that, right? <laughs> uh, since uh, elk is probably the species that people really like to focus on, uh, I'm, I'm just going to touch on a few of the things as it relates to elk. And Utah does have some general and over-the-counter and spike-only elk. Go read the regs. Those are, those are out there. I'm, mostly, I, I'm strictly focusing here on the limited entry bull elk. They have archery seasons, which are usually really early. A lot of people don't prefer those dates for archery. Now there's some units, there's some changes this year in 2021 where some of the old hunt codes are being dropped, some new ones are being added, and some of the archery dates are rolling later into the month of September. So when archery ends, then you get rifle. Yeah, <laughs> people are like, what, what do you mean? Yeah, you get to hunt the later part of September with a rifle. And these are the super high demand hunts in Utah. And then they follow that with muzzle loader. Uh, sometimes they have, a few units have what they call a mid season that is in October. And then they have late seasons that are usually the second week or so of November. As you can imagine, the highest demand ones are going to be the rifle hunts followed by the muzzle loader hunts. And then it depends, usually archery is the next demand. The, the easiest to draw uh, rifle tags, elk tags in Utah will be those late season, late November hunts. They give away more of those tags and they're easier to draw uh, just because the success rates are going to be lower. One of the things you can find out here on Go Hunt, and if you dig around, you know, if you really want to dive down into the uh, Utah DWR webpage, you can find some of this information also. But Utah's elk management plan, units are are set up a uh, number of tags and amount of opportunity based on the age class objective of the bull elk harvested. There's four and a half to five years. They have five units that are in that category. Uh, a harvest objective from five and a half to six, they have two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have eight units in that category. Six and a half to seven years old, they have eight units in that category. There's some units, they want a harvest age class objective of bull elk of over seven and a half years. That's crazy. Seven and a half year old bull elk are, and you think about how many, to, to have that be your average, how many have to be above that? That's why there's so much demand for these six units. Some of them meet that and some of them don't. Most of them are meeting it. But I go look at that information because if I see an objective is six and a half and they're only, the average is, you know, 5.1 years, that tells me that herd's probably in decline. Maybe there was some fluky weirdness about that season, but that's probably not the unit I'm going to apply for. Now, if there's a unit where the, uh, the objective is six and a half, but they're harvesting an average elk of 7.2 years, there's something going on with that. And if I look year after year and it stays that way, hmm, that's a place I probably want to be applying. And they do the same for, for uh, I think, their deer species. Uh, I think deer and elk are the two that they do that for. But there's a lot of good information out here on the insider that helps you develop your strategy. Remember the deadline, March 4th. I always download the regulations from that state. And if you want super amount of detail, the draw odds, I mean, the accurate draw odds, if you want a bunch of research, I mean, Trail Kreitzer, who is one of the key specialists 
uh, at Go Hunt. He lives in Utah. He's got this dialed. Um, so if you want a ton of detail, go out there to the Insider, sign up. They're the group that allow us to do this stuff for free. Uh, and when you sign up for the Insider, you're going to get their 3D maps. You're going to get all this other stuff. But use promo code Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, and they'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. But mostly, if it fits your budget and fits your plan, remember those videos we did earlier, those podcasts we did earlier about having a plan and sticking to it and allocating your budget in a way that gives you the most value. If you can fit Utah on that value spectrum that you're trying to manage, go do it. Maybe Utah's there, maybe it's not. But if you do have Utah on your budget and you draw a tag, you're probably going to have a really, really good hunt. And you're going to have tons of public land to go and chase them on. So, anyhow, don't miss that March 4th deadline. Good luck, be healthy, and be happy. <laughs>